Hi, this is Paul from Zosa Games. Today I want to talk to you about Hostile Solo um, and what I think is the biggest strength uh, of the game. Hostile Solo for me uh, is probably the pinnacle of my role-playing experience. Uh, growing up with Classic Traveller, uh, I'd often play out situations or scenarios solo using those classic rules. Or I built ships, or worlds, characters, uh, ecosystems. But when I created my own setting, the uh, hostile retro sci-fi setting, I was determined to find a way to play within it solo, just like I had with uh, Classic Traveller. One player, no referee, and just a couple of six-sided dice. Well, last year I finally wrote Hostile Solo and it was a labour of love. It was what I, the intention all along for Hostile was to be able to play that setting, that game solo. And it really, it's the game that I've written for myself. Um, what makes it different from the other solo games out already out there, I think, um, is the scene resolution mechanic. Uh, I have tried in the past things like uh, Mythic Game Master, the emu uh, Game Master emulator, um, but I find the experience a bit, bit frustrating having to uh, try and creatively interpret each task, each interaction, each scene by rolling on sort of oracle tables and coming up with, <clears throat> with two or three words and trying to work out, well, what did that mean now for this character in this situation how, how does that move things along and for me it felt a bit like um, reading tarot cards I, I just couldn't I needed something roll a dice that's what happens kind of thing um, so I I know it's extremely popular and a lot of people use it um, and I've given it a go but it, it's not my kind of style really so I was trying to find another way another way around another another way to, to get through this and I settled on the scene resolution mechanic um, and also a th using a crew of characters rather than a single character. Uh, using a crew of characters gives you more flexibility, more more things are happening. There are there are th there's not just one character what he thinks, what he's doing. There are other characters with their own little agendas and uh, conflicts, and so even if there's nothing actually happening externally internally amongst the character group you still got dynamism and you still got things happening and situations and, and problems to solve and i think it's the um it's this interaction between the characters that sort of brings the crew to life and and that sort of makes the hostile solo game more interesting for me uh if you think of like star trek next generation episodes there's quite a few where they're compelling and entertaining even though um the crew are trapped somewhere on the enterprise or, or, or on a planet just interacting with one another so this rules mechanic ensures that there's always something going on even when the player characters are all on their own so the scene resolution mechanic um, like most systems uh, one of the players in the game can be singled out to perform a task role it's defeat a door lock or steal a computer disk so roll a dice, do you succeed? Yes, no, whatever. But the scene resolution mechanic uh, allows several player characters or all the player characters to carry out a complex series of tasks without you, the player, planning, sort of do it, planning all the parts of the, the task. And for me, this, is a, this was like a, a deal breaker. This is, this is the way I could get, get my game, solo game, to work really. So now I didn't have to ne negotiate every character's movement or every character's interaction or is that door locked or not locked? Does the guard see us? Is the guard knocked out? Will the, is the, are the cameras on? Uh, all, all I would have to do is tell the player characters or they, the player characters give them the plan and they would all do that themselves. Um, and it's, this is, becomes the heart of the, of the entire game really. So as a player, you've got to put yourself in the character's shoes. What will be their plan? Uh, and this should run to three or four sentences. And next, the player looks, the player is you, dispassionately look at your plan you've created. And you've got to give it an honest rating for success. And you can choose between sort of shaky, which is not good, solid, 
it's a decent plan and foolproof that really should work and the plan might be good um, but the odds might be stacked against them there's just no easy way to achieve the mission goals you just got to be realistic and honest with with the plan you've created and finally the player needs to decide whether the mission is safe or dangerous will somebody get hurt and could somebody potentially get injured or die or not the difficulty and dangers table is on the screen now next a single dice roll is made to figure out how the entire thing went and it can easily involve half a dozen characters several hours of in-game time all the player has to do is establish what the plan is and then roll uh, to some players it might seem as if we're throwing away all of the role-playing opportunities and sort of skipping through the most exciting parts of the game if you're doing a bank heist well this is this is the cool part of the game and you're just rolling a couple of dice and it's all all done for you uh, but this isn't really the case that single roll sums up the actions of several characters during an intense action-packed scene and there's still tension and there are great chances to role play it's just that it all comes after the roll so the role to resolve a scene is quite straightforward at 2d6 because the player is essentially running a, a team of player characters you can just let them get on with it uh, you shouldn't feel particularly protective about a single character just roll the dice see what the consequences are and move on so it's a shaky shaky plan you're gonna have to need a uh, 10 or more for that a solid plan eight or more and a foolproof plan a six or more and you could add a plus one bonus for each character that brings a significant skill to the scene uh, if it's a safe cracker then you're gonna get plus one for that heist um, although you've you should really be limiting that to uh, a plus three bonus you can add uh, another plus one bonus for the use of some crucial piece of kit or some asset that you managed to acquire to help you achieve the uh, the goal of the the plan and you can sub uh, subtract one for any character who's involved in the plan but really shouldn't be there it's on somebody who's unsuited so what happens it either succeeds or it failed but um, the player will still have more questions did anyone get injured was anyone killed did they leave any evidence behind was some vital clue picked up despite the failure of the mission goals was these kinds of questions wouldn't arise in a tabletop role-playing game because they would have emerged naturally through the gameplay of the session and we've dispensed with that gameplay but we still need the answers to these questions these consequences add a little more randomness to the mix because as any player knows no plan will still have contact with the enemy and improvisation is always required it's the GM the referees job to uh, throw spanners into the works you know make to make things difficult to put obstacles in there to, to force the players to improvise um, so without the referee to add all that tension we resort to the consequences role so whether the mission succeeded or failed something happened along the way potentially bad and often this piece of bad luck will suggest itself based on the situation at hand if not we need to roll to come up with a random disaster well disaster is a bit strong perhaps if the plan succeeded we get to add a plus two bonus to the roll because on this table as you can see the uh, the consequences start bad death somebody dies and they go all the way up to uh, there's a twist in the story and it's, so it's a gradation of, of consequences going from serious to not so serious so with a plus two to the roll if you succeed uh, this consequences aren't going to be too bad some of the results involve uh, injury or death uh, some involve uh, just being trapped or part of the mission of the plan w wasn't completed or some equipment was left behind or damaged or an NPC was was upset uh, it varies and you've got to sort of squeeze these into the situation uh, really uh, and if they don't fit at all roll again for another one uh, you'll see that the death and injury ones happen earlier on in the table so if it's a if it's a if it's a uh, dangerous task you, you've chosen to do you roll 2d6 on this table if you chosen to do a safe there's no chance of any injury uh, plan then on this table you can roll a 1d6 
and add a six, and that will mean that you'll get the consequences uh, uh, that don't include the injuries and death. So we call this method of scene resolution fortune in the middle, and it's because of that that the player now has to explain what happened in the resolution of the plan. So you can go into as much or as little depth as you want, but the main points need to be covered uh, at least. What happened? Why were the characters trapped? Um, so they succeeded, but somebody died. Well, at what point during the heist or what point during the plan did, did they die? And who died? Um, explanations uh, aren't optional, really. Th this is the role playing, uh, this, this discussion, this explanation of, of the plan, of what, how, how, how things went. This is the role playing part. It just comes after rather than before talking about it all and building it all up and then rolling two dice at the beginning. You're rolling the dice at the you're rolling dice at the beginning now and then doing the explanation and the role playing and the scene setting and, and things afterwards. Uh, this is where we explain what happened so that it, it matches up with the results thrown up by the dice roll. So just let your imagination go there, use what you know about the setting, the characters, about the plots uh, as, as it happens so far in the situation. Uh, it's it's a little bit like you're a referee narrating an event to a, a group of players around a table. You're pulling all the threads of a completed scene together so that everyone sat around the table is on the same page. And you can throw anything into the mix as long as it sort of makes sense, goes with the setting really. It adds to the drama and it's believable. And like a referee at a table, uh, have an eye on the future and really exploit the consequences because each one could possibly lead to another dramatic situation or another session of role playing later on. So let's imagine three space crewmen, women, on a ship that's been taken over by the ship's computer, now infected by a malevolent alien AI. They fought to stay alive and now, understanding the threat, they just make a plan to shut down the AI. Perhaps they use um, explosive bolts spare parts from the ship's hatches to blow open the locked door to the mainframe. Uh, using what they've got on the ship, they won't have tons of explosives, they're, it's just, a, they're just space truckers, they won't have anything like that. So improvising explosive bolts, I thought that was quite cool. Uh, once inside, the crewman with computer skill will try to shut it down. Uh, let's say the second will assist the first crewman, and we can say in this plan that the third crewman will stand guard in the corridor against the uh, rogue repair robot that's been trying to kill them earlier. So that's 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 our plan. So I'm going to call that plan a solid plan. Uh, eight are over to succeed, but of course it's going to be dangerous. One or more characters could be injured or killed. So a solid plan, eight are over, dangerous. So looking at the bonuses, the computer expert uh, has got skill. It's a skill we're going to need. That gets us a plus one. The referee could ask for a uh, successful computer roll to get the bonus instead, but I'm not going to do that here. Uh, I'm just going to give him the, the bonus because he's got the skill. The supporting crewman uh, has electronic skill. Now that could also come in useful trying to disable the AI, as you see in 2001 A Space Odyssey. So that should provide us with another plus one. So we've got uh, plus two at the moment. Our roll is uh, eight or over. And our result is a four plus two is six. That's not enough. The task was failed. So what were the consequences? Failed task, dangerous. I rolled 2d6 on the consequences table without any modifier. I roll a seven and I get, if you check the table there, trapped, lost or delayed. So how does that fit this situation here? Well, maybe um, a security door comes down to trap the two crew inside the computer room. The AI is, is trying to trap them in. Um, or the uh, AI mainframe is, is shut down, but the, uh, compute, the AI moves to an auxiliary computer in the engine room instead, sort of shifting away. So that delays, that would delay the, 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 the resolution of the plan. They haven't succeeded uh, and they've just got to do it sort of again, but in a different situation, a different place. 
Uh, I think I prefer the second one because I find it hard to believe that you're going to trap the people who are trying to disable you in your mainframe room. That's not what you really want, want, want to do. So the crew have been fo foiled um, or delayed. And now the player needs uh, another plan. Now there could be some other role playing in between. We could uh, they could go for to retool to go to the equipment bay and find some other equipment. They could have a, you could have a sit and a think about it, and they could uh, there could be a gap in between. But uh, at some point they're going to have, an, have to create another plan. They've used up all the explosive bolts, and now uh, we can say that they've got to get to the drive room while avoiding this killer robot in the corridors. Now you can play out the rest of the game. You could do it minute by minute going through the ship with task rolls and combat or you could just turn to the scene resolution mechanic uh, once again so let's make another plan so to get to the engine room why not uh, why not avoid the corridors why not suit up in spacesuits and crawl across the outside of the ship to the drive rooms airlock and get into the drive room that way using an emergency access protocol uh, then they could shut down all the power generation, turning the ship and the computer dark. That, that would do. So that's still dangerous. Uh, and I think it's just, I still think it's a solid plan, eight or over. No one has anything more than vac suit zero skill uh, for this crew, so there's no bonus there. But our electrician will still shut off power generation, so I'll give the crew a plus one for that for him. So let's roll. We roll the dice, we get a 7, plus 1, 8. We've got a success at last. So they have successfully shut down this alien AI uh, mainframe uh, by cutting the power in the drive room. But there's still going to be a consequence. So roll 2d6 on the consequence table. But this time we're going to add a plus 2 because they succeeded in the roll. So it's going to be more favourable in, in, in their, in their favour. Uh, we uh, roll three plus two is five. Oh, that's a serious injury. So perhaps the AI computer gave one of the crewmen an electric shock while he was trying to uh, switch off the power generation system, or maybe one of them suffered a pressure leak in the spacesuits during the EVA outside the ship and in the airlocks. I'll go with the first option. Um, now the crew needs to uh, isolate the computer whilst they restart the power. Uh, that's that's going to be the, the next stage. And again, we can move away from scene resolution now and go from task to task. Uh, what happened to the AI? Is it still trapped in the uh, auxiliary computer there in the drive room, or did it upload itself to something else? To the to maybe to the repair robot that's still stuck in the, the the corridor. That's uh, a question for the future, and that's uh, progressing the plot even further now. So. Uh, is it is it really over or, or is it not? So that's the way that scene resolution works in Hostile Solo. Uh, I hope I've sort of showcased really how flexible it can be and how it can sort of push the plot along and how it really makes it easier for the player to uh, come up with a scene and not have to worry about what's this character going to do? Can this character make a vac suit roll? Can he get into the airlock? What if the airlock jams? All of that is taken care of with that single 2D6 roll. And if you have to come up with these ideas, it's because of a consequence that you then have to go backwards to, to explain this uh, fortune in the middle system. Well, that's, that. that's it for now. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and uh, I will see you again in a later video. Thank you.